Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Jay Becerra in the three minute pool on ICC. This is Julio Becerra, and he is quite a good player, Mr. Becerra. Uh, I'm gonna go exchange Kings Indian again, just because I'm lame like that. But in reality, he's a very strong theoretician. If I can minimize his theoretical advantage in the opening, I'll take that. So. Um, I've gotten into some battles with Julio before because he's American Grandmaster. I played him in the past probably, oh, I don't know, three or four times. Uh, I've beaten him once, although that was not an OTB game. It was a U.S. Chess League game. And he's definitely beat me at least once. And I think we have a couple draws. Uh, rook e8, what do I do against this move again? Is it rook c1? I can't remember. No, I think it's take. Could be take, but I'm going to go here. A3. I just I couldn't quite remember what what the move was. Uh hmm. Having trouble recalling. I should know this. <laughs> I should definitely know this. Okay, I'll take now. And if he takes with the knight, I'll play bishop d5. Or do I want to go? Yeah, I better go bishop d5. We'll swap these guys. I'll play king e2. I had this in bullet not long ago. Like this exact type of situation. Um, forgot what who it was against. But same setup. Same stuff going on. So maybe rook c1 or f3. f3 would be a normal move. Let's go f3. I'm happy to swap rooks if he wants. So white doesn't have much in this line. It's just that my king is a little bit closer to the center than his. Uh, given that Becerra is a pretty darn strong Grandmaster, I think he's going to know how to neutralize such a disadvantage. And it might even be the case that I could end up worse here just because um, he has a little bit more space than me. He's playing plenty quickly, too. I actually wonder if it makes sense for me to do this in order to try to bring the knight to c3. I'll give it a shot. Check. Yeah, I was slightly worried about this line, but we can do this. And at least now I can blockade his d-pawn, which is isolated, Check. by the way. Maybe he'll go bishop h6, trying to wrest control of the c1 square away from me. Uh, against this, probably I should take and then play knight d2. Yeah. And now I can get my knight to f3, and d4 is very weak. He might be able to go b4, and after I take play rook b8, just to attack b4. That would make sense. Okay, he's going to do this. He's going to try to defend. Uh, if I take, though, he trades and brings a rook down to c2 at the end. That's no good. So maybe rook f1. I don't know what I gained by playing rook f1, but... <laughs> well, actually, okay, I have an idea of knight g5 is what I'm thinking. Knight g5, take, take, and then try to get my rook into f6. Check. Which actually might not be so bad. Yeah, rook f6 now. Uh, or do I want to throw in a check first? Hmm. Let's go here. I'm going to give him a check on uh, e8, just to try to back his king off. Check. And then advance my e-pawn... Better take here first. And then advance this pawn. He doesn't have time to gobble more than one pawn. Right, so... We're advancing this guy. Uh, better go here. Check. Uh-huh. Forgot he could do that. Check. Okay, um, you can go h2, I have to go here. Now it's going to be a race, an out-and-out -out race that I'm not winning. That's too bad. Yeah, um, I'm just kind of busted here. a7, he goes rook a2, and I'm going to lose. All right, I resign. 
I got hung up on that end game. I'll have a look. So this variation is um, kind of crucial for the entire line. I knew all the way up through this point. I can't, I always seem to forget in this position what the move is. Whether it's like an A pawn move, like A3 to keep the bishop on the diagonal, or whether it's taking on C6 right away. I gotta look that up. So A3, he played A4, I dropped the bishop back. I actually thought I had a little something in the middle game. Like when he played knight d4, and as I was saying, I don't think white can really claim much of an advantage aside from the, flag, the fact that the, my king is more centralized than his. That will usually win me a few tempos in, in the ensuing middle game or end game because he's going to have to bring his king closer to counterbalance that. Um, yeah, somehow his knight d4 move just gave me something. I think this is a nice little idea. Knight b1 to c3. Try to go attack this pawn, get our knight into d5. I bet there's more than one way for him to deal with this. Like, actually, knight f4 is not a bad move um, in this position, Check. I don't think. Because after take and take, he's got pressure on b2 and e4. Yeah, that actually would probably be a pretty good idea. And even if I take on c8, there's not as much pressure on e4, but b2 remains a huge weakness. So... I wonder if I'm just worse after knight f4. Let's just see. Oh, yeah. Knight f4, check. Yeah. Check. And he ruins his structure, but he opens his bishop. Opens lines and disrupts my knight c3 plan. I'm sure he would have done that if he could do this over again. Check. Instead, he played that. And I got king d3 in. Here, the engine indicates he should play f4. Okay. Okay which restricts my knight quite a bit. Yeah, my knight has trouble getting anywhere useful now because I can't get to the f3 square, which, contrasted to the game, he takes on Check. e4, and all of a sudden my knight has this nice straight shot to the f3 square where it will attack d4 and also allow me to play knight g5. Yeah, and I thought he should play bishop h6, try to take control over c1. And I can't just simply win a pawn because take, take, if I take here... He has rook c2 or maybe bishop g7 check. So, I don't know what I would have done. I probably would have taken once and then, I don't know, played like rook f1 check or something. But my knight is restricted, and he'd probably take it once it lands on d2. So the position's balanced. Yeah, so I, I got a little something because he didn't play this so accurate. Like, now take, take knight d2. Maybe I overestimated my perceived advantage here. It just seemed like my knight had more potential than his bishop, but... Check. Yeah, knight g5, check. So now we're in this rook end game. King e5 was a nice move. And if I just go after this pawn, he's going to play rook c1. Yeah. And then if take, he's going to go rook g1, I would assume. Maybe not. Okay, so maybe maybe check first. Check. Force my king to the second rank, and then depending upon which king or which pawn I go towards with my king, he can go after the other pawn, either b2 or g2. And his king can probably capture on e4, and I gotta watch his d pawn soon. Yeah, I might be just losing this. So, like, if king e2, then rook b1, and vice versa, if this, then rook g1 looks good. Yeah, I'm in big trouble if that happens. So that's why I felt rook f8 was best, but he played this Check. really accurately. King f4 was good. Maybe I shouldn't take that pawn, huh? Oh, yeah, rook f8. Just push the king away. That would have been a much better idea. Check. For some reason, I didn't want to give him a tempo to win g5, but now when I play e5, his king is cut off. Because in the game, his king was able to come back. How did I let that happen? Yeah, king f6. e5 was a really bad move. King f6, and the problem is if I advance e7, he just goes here, and he's going to take. Or, I guess he doesn't even technically have to play king f7. Yeah, like he could just grab a pawn, and I don't have any good discovery with my rook that will enable me to queen next move. So he's just going to capture e7 next if I move my rook. Eh, uh, that was not... Not stellar rook endgame technique by me. Rook f8 check would have been a nice move to throw in. Yeah. Likewise for him, he probably should throw in a check on d1 first, huh? Push my king away. 
Yeah, computer says that's stronger. Because that way, if he does that, and like say now play rook d2, it is a little different because I can maybe eat his pawn on b5, but should check. I ever uh, check him, my e pawn would just be hanging. So there's some nuances in this end game. Yeah, now I'm probably losing. Check. And he just easily cleaned up all my pawns. Check. Being very annoying, like giving a check and then going and winning the pawns. My e pawn is my only source of counterplay, but yeah, he's got that under wraps. And now it's two connectors versus one lone rook pawn, which he can stop. So if I were to play a7 at the end, he goes here. And I can queen, but queening is not enough to win the game on its own. <laughs> he can also queen later, and yeah, I'm just busted. All right, I got to look up this line, and I will see what's up with the position after, where was it, rook e8. Yeah, bishop g5, rook e8. I need to refresh my memory on this line. So, Mr. Becerra, Julio, good game. And hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll be back tomorrow with another Blitz game. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.